Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. If it's the first time you're visiting my channel, welcome. Subscribe, like, share. Um, if you look through my portfolio of videos, you're going to see I discuss everything. And the one common theme is that it's to do with people, whether or not I can help people to understand um, complex information, whether it's just raising awareness, whether I think I have some information that can help somebody, you know, someone who feels disadvantaged, or whether it's just sharing information, whatever it is, if I think it might have some interest to someone, I'll chat about it. Stick my nose in here, there and everywhere. But today I thought I would talk about trust because trust is such an important thing and in a world where trust is disappearing, I was wondering if people would like to know about how to either rebuild trust or how do you trust in a in a world where hardly anybody seems to be able to be trusted um i think about you know cowboy builders you they come to your door they give you a quote they say to you look we need some money um a deposit to buy the materials and then they they scarper you don't hear from them again how does that affect your relationship with any other contractor that either knocks on your door or who is going to refer who is going to who someone might refer to you you're not going to trust them are you it's the same like um the government you know they tell us so many lies that you kind of think to myself, can I believe them? You have one politician saying one thing, another one saying another, and when they get in office, they say something completely different. Then you have the police who kind of, they frame some people. Um, you're not sure what they're going to say. You're not sure how they're going to behave. And you, you know, you build up this reservation. I can't trust the police. You have relationships and you think to yourself, some relationships are good, some are relationships, you're always on tender hooks. You know, when that person goes out, their behaviour makes you feel as though you cannot trust them. And it might have something to do with your upbringing. It could have something to do with how you were raised, you know, in the home. Did your parents allow you, did they, uh, did you learn by example? Did they have integrity? Were you able to look at their behaviour and see that they were consistent, see that they were honest and say, yeah, I trust my mum. I trust my dad. You know, because anything that they said they would do, even if they said I couldn't do something, they wouldn't let me do it afterwards. They had these boundaries set in place and they stuck to them. So we learn to trust those kind of situations. A lot of times, we can only trust people by their behaviour. We can't trust people by their words. Anybody can say anything to get anything. The only way you can trust somebody is if their word manifests into action. A lot of times, over a period of time, it doesn't. You'll find that people say anything to impress you, and then down the line, things start you know, slipping under the carpet. They don't do what they say they're going to do. And it's such a shame you have online people who, who have this front on, in front of the camera. They put somebody else's photograph up. You know, you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who you're meeting. It's a scam. You know, and all of these things that happen from day to day, from people in the media who give fake news or who manipulate the media, manipulate the news, manipulate what people say, you know, all things like that, it all, it all feeds into that feeling of mistrust, the feeling that you cannot trust anyone, always sceptical. You go to work, you see people whispering. Are they whispering about me? What are they saying? If they can whisper about that person, they can whisper about this person. You become mistrustful. You know, and it's, it's really, really sad that, you know, we live in a world where it's so difficult to trust people. It's so difficult and I was thinking to myself, you know, when um, when you meet people 
and you so much want to trust them. I was, I was watching um, Love Island. I like Love Island, and um, the the what I saw this evening was there was this black woman called Yawande and um, a mixed race man called um, Danny. Now, Danny took a shine to Yawande and he really liked her. Now, Danny is an extremely look, good looking man. And I don't think Yawande had very high self-esteem. And I don't think she could believe her luck. I don't think she believed that Danny really liked her. So she was saying to him, oh, your head's going to turn if somebody else comes in. How do I know your head's not going to turn? And then when she had, when she started putting that into her head, you know, she started withdrawing from him because she, she didn't trust that he was there for her. And so she didn't show him any affection. In, your, in um, Love Island, they all, you know, if they're coupled up, they sleep in the same bed. They're not intimate or anything, but they sleep in the same bed. So when they got in their bed, she'll turn her back to him. You know, if they're sitting down, she, he won't let her, she wouldn't let him kiss her or anything like that. Because in her mind, he didn't really like her and somebody else would come in and um, he, his head would be turned and she'd be left on the lurch. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because she didn't trust what he said. Now, if she liked him, she should have shown that she liked him and that would have built up some kind of relationship with him in the villa. And I believe if they'd established that relationship, like that and she had trusted herself and took the risk to show him how much she liked him i don't believe his head would have turned when annabella came in this evening now annabella's come in and she's starting saying oh i really like you she's only started oh yes yeah. so what's happened now is that and i'm not going to go too much into it because you be, some people a lot of people think love island is a load of crap so i'm not going to go into it too much i'm just trying to show you the trust thing so what's happened now is that your one day's all the all the people in the villa have said to her look you need to up your game because you're going to lose him so now she's decided and she's going to tell him that she likes him she genuinely likes him and she wants to see where the relationship is going to go and she's going to kiss him so she goes up to him, she tells him, I really, really like you. She kiss, He kisses her, she kisses him back. And it all seems hunky-dory in that moment because this is what he's been waiting for. He's been looking for reciprocation. He's been grafting and he hasn't had anything back in return. So now this, this attractive woman is now saying to Danny, look, if I didn't come in to the villa, would she have acknowledged you? Would she have kissed you? Would she have been affectionate? So the trust has gone. Even though she has now shown him, she's kind of shown him too late. As far as he's concerned now, she's playing games because she could have done that before. And as far as your one day is concerned, he's now going off with somebody else and it's become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So all I'm saying is that, you know, when you enter into relationships and you, you want to be, you want to meet somebody who you can trust, you have to be trustworthy yourself. Your word has to be your bond. If you like somebody, you tell them you like them, you show them you like them and, you know, and you work at it, you take that risk. So... When um, we're thinking about trust and rebuilding trust, especially when trust is broken, the only thing you've got is your word. You can take years to build trust and seconds or minutes to break that trust. So, like I said, it's integrity. Your word is your bond. If you say you're going to do something, you do it. If, if, if worst case scenario, something really unavoidable happens, you give that person advance work warning or as much as advance work warning as you can and let them know about the change of plan or whatever. But you don't just dismiss it and think, oh, you know, I'll let her know afterwards or, or she'll understand or whatever. Your word must be your bond. That's like the mafia, you know, the mafia. You know, you watch these movies and what's more important to them is loyalty. Loyalty is trust. Trust that no matter what, you're going to be there for that person. That's how they build their trust. 
They don't want somebody who's wishy-washy, somebody who's going to flip at the turn of a coin. So trust is really important. It's really important. It, it kind of, it governs your life. All these little all these little day-to-day -day things is what builds trust. People don't realise that, you know, some people will say, oh, look, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. They don't mean it, but they say it. And that breaks trust because that person is going to think after a period of time, said that he's going to see me tomorrow or she said she was going to see me tomorrow. I haven't heard from her. Therefore, I'm not going to believe her or him next time. And you see, these little things that you may think are not important are very, extremely important. Somebody lends you a pound and you say, OK, I'm going to give that to you tomorrow. And then you don't give it back to them tomorrow. That person, even though it's a pound, is going to think, hmm, I gave her a pound. I know it's only a pound. It's a principle. And that's what people start looking at. The principle. It's not the amount of money. So if I give her a pound and she doesn't give it back, if, I, if she asks a five pound, what's the odds of me getting that back? So your word has to be your bond. Don't say anything that you cannot back up. It's really, really important. And it's also good for you as an individual. When you can say, I'm trustworthy, I'm reliable, I'm consistent, I mean what I say. That puts you in good stead. It's a remarkable quality to have. Not many people have that quality. Um, let me just see what else I wanted to say. Yes, I was thinking about, you know, people have stopped trusting the Home Office because, you know, they're giving them the money and they're not getting their they're not getting the visas. People have stopped trusting the DWP because they're not getting their you, they're not getting their uh, their benefits. You see how it trickles. Little things, it just stops you from trusting people. Um, I already mentioned the contractors because they're strangers. And it's funny because you can meet strangers and you can feel something and you can find a thing. Oh, you know, I really take to that person. And you can meet people who you do actually trust initially. But it's over time whether or not that trust is warranted that the trust that you've placed in that person, whether or not they actually live up to it. And it's not like you're watching every single thing, but you will notice it. You will notice that they'll say to you, look, I'll pick you up at five tomorrow. They don't turn up until seven. You're like, and they haven't called you and told you that they're going to be late. That will factor into the fact that I cannot trust that person to be on time. You might not think of these things as big things, but it is. They are important. I was thinking about um, the schools. You know, people go to school or they go to university or they go to college and they um, go there to learn. And, you know, sometimes they talk, depending on the subjects, but let's talk about history as an example. People go there and they expect to learn about history. Years down the line, they realise they were fed a load of lies. What does that tell them about the school system? They feel cheated. And the thing is, is that sometimes when people um, tell you something and it's a lie, it can actually have detrimental effects, you know, because people kind of rely on, on information. And so we have Trump talking about fake news. We have the media giving us all kinds of different interpretation of what's going on. And you have people who, you know, trust somebody else and then, you know, they feel betrayed. And next thing you know, they've been killed for it because they, they you know, they, they, oh, I was thinking about, you know, the people with the bank robbers and, you know, they, they give them a thousand pounds, say example. No, they've done, suppose they've done a robbery. And so two people go inside for the robbery, but they don't betray the third one because the third one's holding the money. And then when they come out, that third one scarpered with all the money and spent it. That's what causes problems and death and murder. You should be a somebody should be able to give you a wad of money, one thousand, two thousand, five thousand, and say, "Look, 
I'm, I need you to look after this money for me. I need to go away for two months. Can you do that for me? And they should be able to come back and that money is intact. How many people can you trust to do that? How many people do you know that you can trust to do that? I mean, some people can't even trust their wives or their husbands. You know what I mean? And if you can't trust your wife or your husband, who can you trust? Some people can't trust their family members because their family members are ripping them off. I know many um, homes in Jamaica where people have sent money to have their houses built. And when they've gone over there, the house isn't built, they've no material, nothing. They've betrayed their trust. And these are family members, people that they know. So, you know, trust is a big thing. You need to be able to trust people. And I believe it comes from yourself first. If people start, you know, if they, by their own example, set the standard and they are trustworthy, I believe that that will kind of become a string where it will, people will follow suit then. Or should follow suit. It's not a perfect world. So, you know, if people at the top can't be trusted, how does that trickle down? But we have to kind of start somewhere. And the only place we can start is within ourselves. So we have to start meaning what we say. Don't make any frivolous promises that you can't keep. Um, anything that you say you're going to do, you do. If you can't do it, you give people adequate time and say why you can't do it, apologise and give an alternative time. And, you know, it's just little things like that that help. So if you say you're going to borrow a pound, you give it and you say you're going to give it back tomorrow, give it back tomorrow. If you don't think you're going to have the pound the next day, don't say you're going to give it back tomorrow. Say you're going to give it back the following week. Regardless of how small, don't minimise the, the size or the quantity of what it is you are giving your word on. Whatever it is, whether it's one pound or a thousand pound, treat it with respect, treat it with honour and let your word be your bond. And it has to trickle outwards. And that's all for now. Bye bye.